Parker, expected approach time 34, approach button 17, the altimeter 29 or 9 or 7. to come out of burner burner early when you start to approach this 260s 270s uh -oh. hello and welcome back to the channel thanks for tuning in again to another dcs rip where we discuss all things dcs world from eagle dynamics i'm your host of course prickly hedgehog and it's nice to be back again another busy week for me as we look into this huge patch this week from the ed team implementing a number of fixes and changes for various aircraft and of course yesterday saw the introduction of the Mirage F1 by Argus Engineering which is now in early access pick it up it's 20% off right now and it's a fantastic little plane let's begin with that news before we dig into the patch notes which has quite a few goodies including some major changes and additions to the South Atlantic map did you get the Mirage F1? Well, after more than three years of active development, ED reminds us that the Mirage F1 is now available in early access, as I said. It's an iconic French fighter from the Cold War. The module offers the unique experience of flying a powerful 1970s Western aircraft in DCS world. Although the aircraft is equipped with piloting aids, it is one that requires a skillful hand to fly accurately and maximize its capabilities, say the ED team. Now, I had a little tinker with the jet yesterday without taking the time to familiarize myself properly with the key systems, which would, of course, be suicidal in the real world, but I noticed it was very precise and twitchy. Prickly's flying it right now, if you want to call it that. I will be ironing out some of that in my control setup, of course, without impairing the characteristics of this jet's handling. And I think it's fairly lively, to say the least. It's very quick and has a lot of nose authority, similar to, say, the F-18, considering the wing placement. But I'm not sure yet just how much low-speed control there is compared to the fly-by-wire encumbered Hornet, which excels at that kind of low-speed maneuvering. That will be the subject of more exploration as I get a little bit more seat time. But the first flight was enjoyable, albeit a little bit mixed. He only had to port one let takeoff. Spudmacher described it as similar in handling to the F-14, and I'm not sure I completely agree with that assessment. No disrespect. I fly the Tomcat a lot in downtime from other mission-based activities that we do in the Air Warfare Group. And while there is an analog feel to both aircraft, the Mirage, in my opinion, is much pointier. It has a much sharper roll rate, especially uh, when the F-14's wings are extended. And I think the F-14, in fairness, is a lot more predictable. It's bigger, it's heavier, and it requires the rudder's input for precision. It's very easy to get it flying in a rather hairy fashion if you try to roll the Tomcat or maneuver it like you would the Hornet or the F-16, which, as I said, are fly-by-wire aircraft, and therefore very, very precise and easy and forgiving in many respects. The F-14 will, of course, snap away from you rather quickly. Now, it is an interesting comparison from the analog experience. However, the Tomcat, in my opinion, is a whole different beast, especially between the different variants with the engine types as well. So we'll come back to the Tomcat shortly for some updates on that. Now, getting back to the Mirage, the early features are as follows. Now, it is the CE variant that we're getting, and it's available right now in an almost complete state, which is not typical for a lot of modules in the game, in fairness. Now, as development continues, the other Mirage F1 versions planned include the EE variant, the BE, and the M. Some of the most interesting features available at the release date are as follows. We have... A professional flight model or PFM based on performance and engineering data of the real aircraft. Situations of high angle of attack and outside the flight envelope behavior such as stalls and spins are accurately represented. Extensive and detailed simulation of all flight systems. Flight control system both in its normal electro-hydraulic mode and in degraded modes. The Snecma ATAR 9K50 engine including full envelope damage, compressor stalls, flame outs, and emergency modes. 
the Cyrano 4M radar, which is a unique Cold War era radar in DCS, full electric system, detailed hydraulic system, a fuel system, navigation suite, which includes a navigation indicator or IDN. We have TACAN, VOR, and ILS, autopilot, radios, the Trap 136 and 137B, electromechanical 1970s era Thompson optical sight, which as previously mentioned in another video, is a predecessor of present day HUDs, the ALE-40 countermeasure suite, internal and external lighting, armament system, RWR as well. You've got a sight, oh yeah. So what it is, is it's a clamshell light, it comes in and out like the F-86, and you've got a side light or intercept light. See on the left engine nacelle? That's your intercept light, and that's how they would point up and they pull up next to an airplane on the side and identify it. Now, there is an extremely high-quality 3D model based on blueprints and laser scanning of a real Mirage. Includes animation lights and a damage model. Very accurate, six degrees of freedom cockpit with realistic and detailed instruments and controls. A variety of air-to-air -air and air-to-ground weapons, some of them that have not been seen in DCS before. Uh, we actually went through some of this uh, previously, so I won't go through all of them again. But they include things like the uh, Durandal and Cluster Beluga bombs. There is a reference here to other American and Spanish-made bombs coming. Sound modeling is based on recordings from the real aircraft. There is a, an extremely realistic flyable simulation of the Mirage F1CE, EE, -E, BE, and M models. The EE, BE, and M will be released after the initial release of the CE. So uh, stand by for that. AI models for the most for most of the other variants of the Mirage, including the C, CT, CR, EQ, and EDA. Uh, a vast variety of liveries for the various aircraft as well. Interactive training and practice missions that will help you gain proficiency in the F1. And of course, as mentioned previously, there is a PDF user manual, which I did not spend enough time looking at before I went flying yesterday. So it got a little bit exciting at one point. I just don't want to get too close to prickly. <laughs> oh yeah, I wouldn't either. Nonetheless, let me know what you think of the F1, whether it's worth the discounted price right now, and what your early experiences are with this very, very exciting and attractive looking aircraft. Off the throttle, you hit the ground, and then stitch you follow in S3. Ready? Follow the leader, we're going to go down to the ground. Throttles back, throttles back. Yeah. It's called a uh, onset stall. You. Uh, Increase the angle of attack so fast on the wings. Oh yeah, you disrupted the airflow in the engine. Yep. Look at that, I'm running right over the airfield now. Now the change log for this week's patch was massive. So for brevity and simplicity, I will refer you to the link to dip into a little bit more information if that's what you're into. But there are some treats and highlights worth looking at, so let's begin. It starts with a new panel in the mission editor, a payload window. Now this new auxiliary panel has been implemented for individual settings for certain types of World War II weapons, primarily setting bomb fuses. Now this is the first iteration and the functionality of the panel will likely expand to all types of weapons. This includes fuse arming and delay timings. I'm sure this will be welcome news for the dedicated World War II fans among you, so let me know. ED have added sparks to the Hornet's gun when fired, which naturally is a feature in the real aircraft and is particularly impressive at night. Uh, the jet received about a dozen fixes, including adjustments to the radar detection and locking range. I was going to, uh, I did try this last night with the gun and uh, promptly forgot to load up ammunition. Went flying off to the range, got lost, and uh, spent more time flying to the range than I expected uh, because my head wasn't in the game. And uh, so much so that when I went to fire, <laughs> I realized, ah, there are some X's where there's supposed to be numbers in the stores page. And yes, lo and behold, I pr uh, depressed the trigger and nothing happened. So all of that flying around and uh, energy was a complete waste. Still, uh, exciting stuff for the Hornet there. Now, the F-16 also received a pile of updates and fixes, or heaps, as we say back in New Zealand, heaps of updates, including aesthetic ones like the airshow smoke, and they have added the jet fuel starter door animations. 
they have adjusted radar detection and designation range. There will be a slight delay when the radar first detects a target as a search hit before it becomes a valid track file. The time between first detection and a valid track file is much less now. And this matches references that they have, so nice little attention to detail there. Most of the other exciting details center on fixes and additions such as the HSD threat range ring, which will change color and become red when a threat is within the ring. So exciting stuff there for the F-16 and the F-16 fans out there. Again, an extensive change log for you to check out if you're looking for a specific thing. Another aircraft, of course, that's still in development and has been a fantastic addition to the game, and that is the Apache. This got some treatment too, as to, is to be expected, being a multi-crew and a very complex aircraft. Just a snippet of the highlights as follows. They have corrected the gun jiggling. They have fixed multi-crew uh, parking brake not working, no ra radar altitude tape on the FLT page. George being super OSHA conscious and sitting safe after every Hellfire shot and a swag of sinking issues in multiplayer and also canopy errors in the cockpit, so on and so forth. Yet another extensive change log. Now many of you will have noticed the advertising of the new rear cabin cord machine gun places for multi-crew and AI gunners that have now been added to the hind. So a little bit more helicopter love here. There is a desync apparently that needs to fixing if the aircraft rearms and the uh, changes occur to the cord mounting side. Uh, but for now they have uh, uh, working machine guns, which is exciting. So they have added the ability to remove the mirrors with a third push of the mirrors button. And they have done some tweaks and improvements to Petrovich. All good stuff. Now they have updated apparently the 3D model of the, of the Airboss room for the supercarrier, so that's also exciting. The Mosquito A10C2, P47D, FW190A, and D models, the BF109, all of these got some minor fixes, and I'm curious to see how the new A10C2 cockpit switch sound. We have clicky clicky cockpit there. Contact. You're taking fuel. Now, as promised, the Tomcat topic, which is also pretty extensive. Now, they've added the ability to remove the fueling probe door by triggering argument 1616. Now, if someone could clarify what that means, I wasn't able to decipher that one. So clearly I'm missing. I'm sure I know what that means, but my brain didn't click to what this is. So it's uh, maybe it's a term that I haven't heard before with regards to programming. So let me know uh, what that means. If you can decipher, I'd appreciate it. They have added an AFAC role assigned, uh, assignable, excuse me, in the mission editor. And they've also added the missing liquid O2 gauge in the cockpit by the pilot, which sits on the right front. Lots of fixes for the lantern system. Various textures have been corrected and added or adjusted at least. And they've also added some Chinese localizations uh, for language for missions and the final hour campaign. So good news there. Sticking to heat blur products, they have completely overhauled the Viggins landing gear suspension and thus the traction has also been fixed, which is exciting news. Let's turn now to Razbam. And this is going to be pretty interesting to a lot of you. Uh, obviously, the Harrier has received some updates, including, of course, uh, pre-March 1994 missions. The INS will be switched to nav mode automatically. Remember, GPS wasn't a thing for a while <laughs> for younger viewers among you. I know, how do we function without it and the worldwide Wibby thing? Who knows? Uh, somehow we did. Anyway, massive and complex updates to the Mirage, which is really, really interesting stuff. And I need to find some time to dig into this because they have included more tweaks to that engine model rework, which they introduced back in June, I believe. These include improvements to the new physical engine model. And they've added things like the effect for precipitation, engine alarms, drag tuning to match engine performance, supersonic idle flame out, engine fires, oil leak modeling and cascading damage modeling, such as the explosion of the compressor, which can therefore cause damage to other systems on the aircraft. That is 
a very interesting level of detail and I'm not a Mirage 2000 pilot. I do own the module, but I've not really flown it. Um, I'll need to look into that perhaps independently when I can find time. But if you're more au fait with this information on this wonderful French jet, see what I did there, and can shed light on the experiences with it, let us know in the comment section below. It appears to me to be a very, very complex engine modeling. I have seen a few videos. Unfortunately, most of them are in French on the uh, people that have been assisting with this. So I'm not really familiar with some of the changes that have been made and exactly uh, the nuances, if you like, of all of these little tweaks. And I'm very curious to see how it compares to other engines modeled in the game, whether they are ED products or whether they are other third party engine models. That stuff is really, really interesting, and it certainly shows a degree of sophistication, which I don't believe we have in the game, unless I'm mistaken, so let me know. Now, continuing on with the RASBAM products, as mentioned, the South Atlantic map got some due attention by the map team, and this is worth mentioning. Now, for the assets pack, of course, they have added a ski ramp, a static object for aircraft to practice, takeoffs and landing. There is a 3D nodding donkey model apparently that's been added and they've also thrown in taxi routes on HMS Invincible and of course landing points. The RWR symbols now return for the Invincible and Leander class ships and they've also added levels of levels of detail excuse me for Leander and Condell class ships as well so very exciting. Now turning to the broader aspects of the map itself they've added two new airfields They've added terrain detail maps for most of the south and parts of the mid to north areas. They've added additional cliffs um, around the Falklands themselves, vegetation maps on the north mainland, custom beaches for the Falklands, and they've also added five new towns, texture fixtures across the map, and some new AI taxi routes at Rio Galagos. So... Lots more to explore. I haven't been on the map for a while because I've been busy with other stuff, life and what have you, but I'm still a huge fan of this map. And in part because it's been really interesting to watch it evolve. It's such a beautiful place to fly. And I know some people had given it some, you know, um, a kicking, if you like, on some of the features that they, perhaps people were uh, hoping to be implemented straight away. But of course, it is an early access product. The team is still as you can tell and can see, doing some work on it. And these fixes are only going to enhance the playing experience on this magnificent map. It's a huge playing ground for us, and I'm really excited uh, about its future development in the game. So I'm still a believer, if that makes any sense. And uh, yeah, we'll see how this thing goes. So let me know. Now, pretty much all of the aircraft in the game that I haven't already mentioned received some updates. And rounding out this monster change log, several campaigns also received tweaks, including the Raven 1 Dominant Fury campaign, which a lot of you raised some minor issues with over the last few weeks, which were frustrating. And these appear to have been addressed or hopefully have been addressed. Again, let me know what you think if you've seen some improvements or have been able to flow through some of the missions. I have... Uh, taking a little break from that campaign. I was working on some other stuff, as I've said, um, but pretty cool. And I am really enjoying the missions that I've done on the campaign. I think it's fantastic. It's been very, very well done. So as I said, these are just a snippet of the highlights from this massive change log this week. And as you can tell, if that's just the uh, snippets, you can kind of get a grasp of just how big this change log is this week. There are just too many for us to review individually, but I do think if you're a Mirage 2000 owner, it'd be well worth looking at this extensive modeling being done to the aircraft systems. I'm very interested to see community feedback on it, uh, seeing that it is such a comprehensive overhaul. And again, it's actually quite an impressive thing to read through on the work that they've done. Very, very nuanced. So again, give me your feedback on that. I'm very, really, really fascinated as to uh, how the community is reacting to that and I'm very curious about the work that the team are doing on it. So this brings us really to the end. I hope you're all doing very well. I hope you enjoyed the video this week. Don't forget to like, of course, subscribe and share and comment in the comment sections below because it really helps the channel. There's also the super thanks button, as I always mention, which I appreciate. It's not a mandatory contribution, but if you wish to contribute, that really helps, again, this channel grow. I enjoy your presence on the forums and things and the discussions that we have, at least in the comment section below. So continue to do that. 
Who knows? Maybe some of us will get to fly together one of these days. Maybe I need to pop into one of the public servers and kind of tool around. Anyway, we'll wrap up here. Don't forget to let me know if you've purchased the Mirage F1 and give Argus Engineering some feedback on their brand new DCS product. Thanks to ED and the team and all the people that do the bug squashing and assist with the game's development. It's a massive amount of work and it means that we get to enjoy an improved product. We get to enjoy products like the Mirage, the Mirage 2000, Rasbam's map. And of course, we've got more goodies coming this year as well. So stay tuned for further updates. That'll do for this week. Cheers, everybody. This is Brickley Hedgehog, out. Pull up, pull up. Altitude, altitude. Target.